title of the sermon this morning is God, Mothers, and Mary. <laughs> uh, we're going to look at those three things, and we're going to look at the, the beginning, the middle, and the end. You say, boy, we're looking at everything, aren't we? Yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, motherhood is, is a wonderful part of life. It can be the biggest blessing in your life. It can be a problem. It can be a, a heartache in your life. Uh, but God invented family. And, uh, you know, the, the idea of a mother and a father and children, uh, God decided that. Uh, it's not a village. It's, you know, it's not, he, he didn't make us these other ways. Uh, sometimes you hear a young couple, they're married, and, and then they'll say, now we're going to start a family. Well, listen, you started a family when you got married. You're going to add to your family now when you start having kids. Then you become mothers and fathers. Uh, husband and wife, that's a family. Uh, I've, I've had friends, never had children. God didn't bless them with that. That's okay. Uh, that's, that's the way God decides sometimes. But motherhood is, is a, quite often a, a part, fatherhood. Uh, we add to our families when we b begin to have children. God made that pattern. In a sense, God is that pattern. Uh, Jack Hiles talks about the Holy Spirit. Uh, he says the mother is the Holy Spirit in the home. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There's the triunity of God. And God is also the strength you need to fulfill that pattern. Now, like I said, family can be one of the greatest blessings of your, your life. It can be one of the biggest challenges of your life. Uh, God gives you the strength to, to, to fulfill your part of that pattern. You might have wondered at some of the songs we sang this morning. Those weren't really Mother's Day songs. But uh, in looking at John 3.16, and uh, while I prepare my message, I, I, songs come to mind. I just jot them down, and, and uh, usually those are the ones that we sing. And so we sang about Jesus this morning. Uh, John 3.16, many of you probably know that. Say it with me. Let, let's say it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16. That's probably the most well-known verse in, in the whole world. But you know, the context of that, Jesus was talking to a religious ruler, a man who, who knew all about religion, his name was Nicodemus, and he said to Nicodemus, uh, you know, the Bible says he, he came to Jesus by night. We think that he was maybe a little afraid to be seen talking to Jesus. And, uh, he said to Jesus, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You know, if this were a cartoon, you'd see a question mark above Nicodemus' head. Born again? Now listen to what he says. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. See, everybody is born once. Everybody that's alive is born physically. That's where motherhood comes in. What a blessing. Now, what a challenge. But not everybody is born again. Now, someone has said, if, you, if you're born twice, you'll only die once. <laughs> if you're only born once, you're going to die twice. You're going to die physically, you're going to die spiritually. And that's exactly what Jesus is talking about there. That which is flesh, that which is spirit. The physical and the spiritual. Uh, water and spirit. And, uh, you know, birth is a wonderful thing. But the beginning of birth, you know, when a, when a child is born for a mother, that can be quite frightening, especially the first, first child. Uh, you know, I, I can remember, uh, I have a book about motherhood. It's not actually mine, it's my wife's. I was looking at it this week. It says on there, given on the occasion, May 9th, 1976, the youngest child in the service. That was my wife. She'd given birth 10 days before, just, just like June uh, this year. Uh, and she was in church, played the piano for church, probably. Um, you know, uh, that was a, kind of a scary time for us, the first child. Uh, for her especially, you know, it's, everything's new. Uh, what's going on? What lies ahead? You know, will I be up to it? Uh, what, what will happen? Jesus said in, in John chapter 16, and and verse 21, a woman when she is in travail hath sorrow. Travail is childbirth. Because her hour has come. Man, it's difficult. I remember 
one of our, I think it was our second son. He was born, Dola was, she was great, gave birth. They handed that baby to me and went to the woman next door who was screaming and hollering and carrying on. She was in trouble. It was, it was hard. Man, they just wrapped Philip, as our second son, wrapped him up, handed it to me, and I walked around with him for about an hour before anybody else ever looked at him. Um, when a woman's in travail, she hath sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she's delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. You know, a lot of things in life are like that, but especially childbirth. There is a, there is a beginning. Mary, the mother of Jesus. I can't imagine a, a stranger lead up to a birth than Mary's. You know, angels popping in and saying, oh, by the way, <laughs> Luke chapter 1, that... Uh, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Have you ever noticed angels always say, fear not? You know why? Everybody's afraid. <laughs> Whoa, who's this? Uh, he shall be great. You know, to have an angel come and tell you, you're going to have a child. And then after the birth, in Luke chapter 2, they, they take Jesus to the, to the temple. It was one of the things that they did after eight days. And uh, there was a man there named Simeon. And... Uh, he said, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. And then he says to Mary, Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also. Wow. Here's this eight-day-old child announced by angels. He goes to the temple, and, and one of the priests says, This child is going to break your heart. It's going to be, it, you're going to have a, a hard time because of this child. You know, for us, for Mary, uh, childbirth, you know, becoming a mother, uh, it, it's, it's kind of an entry into the unknown, and, and it's, it's, it's scary, and, and it's difficult. But you know what? For God, there's no unknown. When God created the world, if, if the Bible says in, in Revelation chapter 13 and, and verse 8, he's talking about Jesus. He calls Jesus the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Do you realize that when God made the world, He knew that Adam and Eve would sin? He knew that you'd be born. He knew that you'd be born a sinner. He knew that I'd be born a sinner. And you know, there, there was no surprise for God. God never says, oh, didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> God knows. John 3.16 isn't just about the cross. It's about creation. It's about the beginning. God so loved the world that He gave. He gave from the foundation of the world that He would die for our sins. And what a blessing it is uh, to know that, that someone knows <laughs> and someone cares and someone has a plan, and that's God. And it makes sense. There is a beginning. For God, there was no mystery about it. For us, there is. There's a lot of things we don't know. But then, you know, after the birth comes this long thing called life. <laughs> uh, you know, life is not just about birth, is it? And uh, for, for mothers, it's a big deal giving birth. But then comes all the other things. Toilet training. Two and three-year-olds. Puberty. <laughs> uh, marriage. You know, they grow up and, man... Uh, they're going to marry somebody, grandkids. There's a lot of things involved with life. And there's a lot of things we don't know. We don't know how they're going to work, how they're going to turn out. Um, but we, we trust the Lord, living. Well, for Mary, it was, it was the same. Uh, G they took Jesus to the temple when, when he was 12 years old uh, for the Passover. It was a trip that they had to take. And... Um, when they left, evidently Mary thought Jesus was with Joseph, and Joseph thought Jesus was with Mary, and they got a day's trip out. Oh, he's not with you? <laughs> Jesus wasn't with them. It took them three days to find him. I was just reading that this morning thinking, three days to find their, your 12-year-old. In Luke chapter 2, verse, verse 41 uh, they went every year to the Passover. In verse uh, 46 is where it says it was three days. And when they found him, he was sitting with the, the doctors, that's the, the educated men, hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And then his parents, when they saw him, were amazed. And his mother said, 
Mother's Day. We need to see what Mom says. Son, why hast thou dealt thus with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. That sounds just like what a mother would say, doesn't it? Son, what in the world are you doing? You have caused, we, we, we're just going nuts looking for you. Now, they don't say that in Hebrew, I guess. But, and here's Jesus' answer. How is it that ye sought me? Wished ye not that I must be about my father's business? That's not a normal 12-year-old answer. Jesus was different. And Mary knew he was different. Uh, they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. <clears throat> See, his life was different. Uh, she wouldn't have understood everything about, about Jesus. Later on in his ministry, you know, he began to preach and crowds came around. Uh, there was one time in Mark chapter 3 where the crowd was so great that people couldn't come and go. He was, he was preaching in the house, and the, the house was full, the house was surrounded. Uh, the Bible says, The multitude cometh together so that they could not so much as eat bread. And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, for they said, He is beside himself. He, he's going around the twist. You know, they, they thought, There's something wrong. And, and Mary and, and her, her sons come. Then, cometh, then came his brethren, his mother, and standing without sent unto him, calling him, the multitude sat about him and said unto him, Behold thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. Your mother and your, your family's outside. They want you. He answered them, Who is my mother or my brethren? He looked round about on them which sat about him and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. For whosoever uh, shall do the will of God, the same as my brother and my sister and my mother. Man, that's different, isn't it? Uh, his life, Mary didn't understand everything that was going on. Some people might have thought he was mad. But you know, for God, there's no surprises about life. Uh, Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. And, and there's no surprises to God about your life. Sometimes we, we have things that happen, we think, man, where'd this come from? Well, God knows. In uh, John chapter 2 and, and verse 24, uh, Jesus, it says, did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. God knows what's in our heart. God knows what our life is like. God knows the next step. He knows what's going to happen. In fact, the, the psalmist put it this way, Psalm 139. He said, O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. God knows this. God knows your life. God knows your beginning. God knows the middle. He knows all about you. The thing that amazes me, God knows all about me, and he still loves me. <laughs> he even allowed me to be born and make all the mistakes that I, I, I'm going to make. But you know, with a beginning and a middle, there also comes an end. Uh, death is a normal part of, of what we experience. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You know, Jesus coming, he knew he was coming to die. You and I don't know the, the day or the moment or the means of, of our death. And, you know, sometimes it happens that as parents, uh, our children die before us. God calls death an enemy, by the way. He says the last enemy that will be destroyed is, is death. Mary. You know, here's, here's Mary, the mother of Jesus. And... You remember what the, the priest had said to her? Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also. And she was there for Christ's death. It must have been an, an amazing thing to have seen him, to have experienced his birth, all the things that went on with that, his life, to have heard him preached, and now to see him die. John 19, verse 25, on the cross... The Bible says, Jesus saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved. That's John. He saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to, to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciple took her unto his own home. John took care of, of Mary. Evidently, Joseph had died. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why Jesus did that, but he was very aware of his mother. I can guarantee you she was very aware of what was happening to Jesus. And you know, in seeing his death, 
Uh, you, can say, you can say from Scripture that Mary was a woman of faith. I, I don't know if you've ever noticed when, when Mary, before she gives birth, she's meeting with her cousin Elizabeth. Uh, I think they call it the Magnificat. She, she talks about the, the experience that she's going through. She said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Can you imagine trusting your son for your eternal salvation? And yet Mary understood that she needed a Savior. She was not born sinless. She did not live sinless. She was a normal human being. She was a godly woman. God chose her because of that. And she said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. She was a, a woman of faith. Uh, the Bible says in uh, Luke chapter 1 and verses 46 and, and 47, I just, I just read that, my soul doth, doth magnify the Lord. She, she started right. And that's the key. Uh, the way to finish right is to start right. She started by faith. Even before Jesus was born, she was looking to God to be her Savior. And that's why Jesus came, was to be our Savior. And the last time you hear mention of Mary in, in Scripture is in Acts chapter 1, verse 14, and she is a faithful member of the church. Acts chapter 1, verse 14. You can see it there. They were, they were having a prayer meeting. And they were all, these all, and he'd listed a whole bunch of names before. He says, in one accord with the women and, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. His brothers were there too. Now, what a blessing. And, and the reason she could continue as a person of faith was because she started in trusting the Lord. We don't know. We don't know about our beginning. We don't know about the middle. We don't know about the end. But God does. And that's the, the hope that we have. See, this was Jesus' purpose. This was why Jesus came. Jesus many times said th something like, and I quote here, I must work the works of him that sent me. He would say to people, I must work the works of him that sent me. But on the cross, he said, it is finished. No more work to be done. It's finished. Jesus came for a specific purpose. Uh, Luke 19.10 says, The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's why Jesus came. John the Baptist saw him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. That's why as Christians, we don't offer lamb sacrifices anymore. Those were just a picture of the one to come, Jesus. He fulfilled that. We don't practice the shadow when we have the reality. We have Christ. He's the sacrifice permanent for sin. God had a purpose in Jesus. God manifest in the flesh, the Bible says, for salvation, for the gospel. We use that term a lot. Scripturally, the Bible describes it. It says that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scripture, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. I always found it interesting that God adds, according to the Scriptures. It wasn't just that it happened. It was that God said it would happen, and then God recorded it did happen. <laughs> That's what makes it what we can ba build our faith on. God says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. It's not just a point in history. It's the truth of eternity. God has a purpose in the beginning, in the middle, in the end. God has a purpose for you. God wants to know you. God wants to be your Savior. Mary worshipped and recognized God, my Savior. Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 1.9 about Jesus who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. See, before we began, God had a purpose. God had a plan. Romans 8, he says, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son. That's God's purpose, is that we be like Jesus. You know, we, uh, we quoted, or we, we looked at John 3, 16, God so loved the world. What a blessing to know that God loves us. The Bible says God commended or showed His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
You know, we're not like that. We look at people, and if we like them, then we think, oh, maybe I'll, I'll be kind to them. But God saw us as sinners, re rebels against him. And he loved us because that's who he is. God is love. And he gave himself for us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You know, you think about Mother's Day. And, uh, you know, I'm not a mother. I'm a, I'm a father. But uh, children, can you imagine giving your child for someone who hates him? You know, the world doesn't say, oh, Lord, we love you. They say, God, we hate you. Quit telling us what to do. Until their hearts changed. We're rebels against God. But God loved us. God so, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And, and Christ died. He, he rose again. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. And, and let me say, this belief is not a leap in, into the dark. God is not saying, just, just believe. <laughs> no, he's saying, believe what I've done. Believe what I've said. Now, this is God's word. Uh, I use this verse all the time. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Faith is not just something. It's faith in what God has said. And God has said that we're all sinners. You know, that's, that's just true of every one of us. There, there's no difference. It doesn't matter where we come from. You know, we're, we're from all over the world here, aren't we? Listen, sin is the same everywhere. The wages of sin is still death. It doesn't matter what part of the globe you're on. We've all sinned. And, you know, to be saved, we need to admit that. We need to agree with God. We need to believe, the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And, and Jesus said, there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. No other name. Only Jesus. Boy, that's a narrow way, isn't it? You better believe it. Christ said that he's the only way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, Jesus said. Wow, that's a narrow way. We have to admit we're sinners. We have to believe uh, what God has said and what Jesus has done. And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I love that verse. Uh, that's, that's my lifeline. Y you wouldn't believe it, but sometimes a pastor doesn't feel saved. And uh, the way I know I'm saved is by God's word. I've called. I've believed. He prom he's made me the promise. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What a blessing. What a blessing. You know, that's, that's what he's pointing to there in John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God is pointed toward eternity. Our God is eternal. You know, before time began, God was. He stepped out of eternity to make time. He made it for us. And the Bible says someday God's going to say, time shall be no more. <laughs> and we're going we're to face eternity. Now, you can face eternity with God or separated from God. The choice is yours. You know, relationships here on earth will fail. No mother can promise their children that they'll always be there. We can say it, but we can't guarantee it. it just, we just don't have that ability. But God can. God can tell you, I'll never leave you or forsake you. He's the eternal God. It made me think of a, of a song. It's a little bit hard to, to read this song, but the things of earth will dim and lose their value. A heartache here, it's just a stepping stone along a trail that's winding always upward. This troubled world is not my final home. See, relationships here will fail. Uh, life, you know, we'll have different beginnings, middles, and ends. Uh, life has an end. Motherhood has beginnings, middles, an end. Life has a beginning, a middle, an end. And the question is, where will you spend eternity? Where will you spend eternity? Uh, we're going to take our, our song books this morning. and It's page 182 in, in your, your books there. It'll be on the, the screen, I think. Jesus never fails. And what a blessing to realize. I, I don't know how it is for mothers. I've never been a mother. But I know as a father, sometimes you think, man, I wish I'd have done that better. My kids are all grown, and uh, they say, you really know how well uh, you've done as a parent with your grandkids. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's things I wish I'd have done better. Let me tell you, Jesus never fails. 